Welcome to Abyssos, the fifth circle savage. Proto Carby has beefed up quite a bit from normal mode. There's gonna be many more variations of mechanics, and each one from normal is beefed up by far. Let's get right into it. Before starting the pool, establish clock spots and light party positions. For clock spots, I recommend True North. For light parties, I recommend East and West with clockwise rotations for a later mechanic. So East will also take South. First is Sonic Howl. This is a very light raid wide meant to just soften you up. This leads immediately into Ruby Glare, which is just about lethal on its own. You will need to mitigate at least a little bit to survive. Like in normal, Ruby Glow will always summon a set of Ruby Walls. The first pattern is always four squares, two Topaz Crystals, and two Poison Crystals. The Poison Crystals will always be placed in a diagonal pattern with one in an outer corner and one in an inner corner. Topaz Crystals can spawn just about anywhere. There are only two actual patterns to deal with. The Poison Crystal on the outside of the arena? That square is always unsafe. If both squares next to it have Topaz Crystals, you must go to the square with the inner Poison Crystal and hide at the edge. There's just barely enough room for the team to fit between the puddle and the edge. Careful on your way over to not step into the poison. It leaves a nasty but livable dot. The other pattern is much more roomy. If there is an empty square, just go there. The tank will want to bring him as deep into the arena as the other pattern, but there's a lot more leeway for movement or things like jump. As the poison puddles disappear, we have a double tank buster. Venomous Mass is an unmarked AoE tank buster on the current tank. During the cast, have the tank run away from the party and get tank swapping. This places a poison dot and a physical damage up debuff, leading immediately into Toxic Crunch. Toxic Crunch will do major damage and put a poison on the swapped tank too, so watch out for draining HP while positioning for the next mechanic. And these poisons can stack, so don't just think about invoning it. New to the arena are eight black circles, four in the middle on cardinals and four on the outside corners. Two venom puddles will appear in the middle and two more on the outside in random positions and begin to count up. When they count up to eight, they summon adds that will enrage if you fail to kill them. Having two people stand in a puddle will negate the mechanic when time runs out. There's a number of complications. One, if you don't have two people in the puddle, it will explode on the nearest player, killing them and anyone nearby. Only tanks have any hope of living. It also still summons an ad. Two, standing in the puddles will give you toxicosis until you step out. Do not stand in the puddle until about the 6 or 7 count. This debuff is a heavy bleed, meaning you will bleed less the less time you are in it. Going in at the last moments will only cause one tick of damage, or even none at all. And the final rub is that it is random. To solve this, we split into four pairs, tanks, melee, ranged, and healers. If you only have one melee, choose who is a budget melee. Tanks and melee will take puddles in the middle, with the healers in range taking the outer puddles. Agree on a mental clock spot to begin, and rotate around in opposite directions. So let's say, south is the agreed upon start point for the outside groups. Healers will start south and rotate clockwise until they reach a puddle. The range will go counterclockwise. This ensures both outside puddles have a pair. And note, starting south is mental, not physical. Both groups can be standing in the middle of the arena before the mechanic goes out and use their eyes relative to south starting positions. Same goes for the melee and tank groups. Start northwest with tanks going clockwise. Melee will go counterclockwise. Reach your puddle and stop outside of it. When the timer is about to expire, both players run in and stop the Venom cast. A second Venomous Mass into Toxic Crunch will follow up. Do the same as before, but in reverse. Keep an eye on poisons on both tanks and heal as needed. Ruby Glow 2 comes after a few autos and involves a brand new mechanic. First off, let me say, this happens during 2 minute windows and is made safer with arm's length and sure cast. Your group may want to decide to hold 2 minutes until after this, as there is a force told later and some downtime no matter what you do. Ruby Glow will place a diagonal wall across the arena. A Topaz Crystal will spawn along the wall in one corner, with a Poison Crystal across the way. 
stand at the topaz to avoid the poison, and wait for Carby to choose his mechanic. He will rush mid and cast Double Rush towards one of the two empty corners. He will then turn around and dash to the other corner. Start on the side of the mirror, he will dash into second and push your knockback mitigations. The mitigation seems to apply to both dashes based on the cast bar, not when he actually does the dashes. Standing at the rear side will cause your party to entirely dodge the first dash. Second, you need to know if you stay here or cross over the barrier. That depends on the Topaz Crystal. Which direction Carby dashes first is random, so you may be on the same side as the Topaz. If you are, cross the mirror to the other side after the first dash. If you aren't, just stay still and wait out the mechanic. The second dash, as mentioned, will knock you back into the wall very easily. You need to stand in the middle of the arena, slightly stepped away from the poison puddle side, to be knocked into the safe corner. It also does heavy damage, which is why we only want to be hit by one of the dashes. There is no way to avoid the second dash, so we just take the damage and deal. If you take both dashes, you will just take lethal damage. Heal up after the ruby glow and mitigate slightly to ensure you survive the dash. He will jump back mid and the poison puddle will remain a little longer. Sonic Hal's completion marks the disappearing of the puddle, but will also be followed up quickly with Ruby Glow 3. This segments into four squares again. This one comes with four sets of Topaz Crystals that come in alternating safe spot pairs, but all crystals will spawn before any explode. What I mean by that is the first set of Topaz will spawn in diagonally opposite corners. The second set will always fill the two empty corners. To dodge these, you let the first set explode and dodge into either of those squares for the second explosion. The third and fourth set will do the same. Three squares will be given Topaz Crystals, with one square being safe. The fourth and final set of crystals will have the safe spot be the opposite corner, so if the third safe spot is northeast, the fourth safe spot will be to the southwest. Be careful of moving too early or too late, as the scattering light does last for a moment. To solve this mechanic, I just watch for the first and third crystals to know the safe spot for all four. Watch for just one crystal to spawn, stand in a square next to that one, ignore the second topaz. Watch the third set of crystals, aiming the camera so that I can see three squares. If I see three topaz spawn in front of me, I know the square I am already in is the safe spot. If I see only two, one spawned behind me and the safe spot is the one I didn't see get a crystal. Make a mental note of this safe spot. The fourth safe spot is always opposite the third. With that in mind, I start in safe spot one. Topaz explodes. I move left or right across the wall. Topaz explodes. Move to the safe spot I mentally noted for number three. Topaz explodes. Move diagonally across to the final safe spot. Topaz explodes and mechanic ends. It simply boils down to just watch the safe spots but given some issues I've seen people have, I figured I'd talk it out. Another Venomous Mass follows up with a small pause after. During the Toxic Crunch cast, start moving to your clock spots. Make sure the boss is faced true north. There are two possible casts that come up next, Venom Surge or Venom Squall. These are opposites, so it's not much to remember. Venom Surge will always be light party stacks, Everyone stacks mid to bait placed AoEs, then everyone spreads to clocks. Venom Squall is clock positions, bait placed AoEs, then run to light party stacks. We stack east and west for those, and these positions are relevant later. Whatever mnemonic helps you remember, take it. Mine is Squall wants to be left alone. Also the name's Leon. Oh, and these hurt a lot, especially the spread. Make sure everyone is topped off and some mitigation is applied for the spread. Quick run mid after the surge or squall for another 50-50 dice roll. You will get claw to tail or tail to claw. Let's just take claw to tail for now. When the cast finishes, he will begin to claw forward six times, then a double claw swipe for a seventh swipe. 
This cleaves the entire frontal half of the arena, so stand at least behind the midpoint arrows at the sides of his hitbox. After the seventh swipe, run through as he will then swipe his tail, cleaving the entire rear arena section. You have a good full second to react, and with this in mind, what is tail to claw? The exact opposite. He will swipe his tail, then do the seven frontal swipes. Pay attention to where the tail or claw comes first in the cast name, and you're good. And now we reach the middle point of the fight. Carby is a hungry and stompy boy. Devour is a simple mechanic. We need to dodge the red marker's movements. I refer to this as the bite mark. There are a few rules to this. One, he will always jump clockwise to start. Two, he will jump eight times total. Three, he can only jump clockwise and counterclockwise, never across to the opposite corner. And finally, there are only two patterns. To visually orientate yourself, pretend the bite marker always starts to the northwest, regardless of the starting spot's actual location. We're going to perform the mechanic relative to the starting spot, since it can spawn in any of the four corners. All directions for the stomps are based on this relative position, not true north. We want to be positioned near the middle, slightly to the south. We'll be at the inner edge of the Venom Puddle, using the faded black circle to position. Here's a pair of pictures our ninja made that shows the two patterns. What I want to take out of this is the pivot point. That being, where Carby will turn around. Pattern 1 is known as Square Pattern, due to the lines to track the jumps looking like squares. The pivot point is the southwest. He only turns around when reaching this spot. Because he only jumps 8 times, the second time he reaches his pivot point, he is out of jumps. For Intercard Pattern, no I don't know why it's called that, the pivot point is northeast. So the second jump places Carby northeast, and he'll immediately turn around and start going the opposite direction. When reaching the northeast a second time, he will turn around again and finish the jumps. So simply, orientate yourself so that the first bite spot is in front of you and to the left. See if the pivot point is northeast or southwest, and you're done. Rotate around the inside of the Venom Puddle spot in the same direction as Carby, turning around when he reaches the pivot point. As far as dodging the Stompy Boy, you don't need to worry about anything else. If it helps, you can such as the reason there are eight stomp points. There is one per pie slice, and you can only jump on each spot one time. There are several other strategies and mentalities you can use, but this is the one that works best for me. However, we aren't done. Four Venom Puddles spawned in the middle. Once again, you want to select spots. My group does this part true north, but relative to the end point of Devour will increase uptime for melee. We have melee east, heal is south, ranged west. North, we put one tank in the puddle. The other tank will stand direct mid. Remember that a failed Venom puddle explodes the nearest player in an AoE and spawns an add. We want that add, so we have to intentionally fail the tank puddle. Putting only one tank in it means we can also keep the explosion away from everyone else. We can also have them pop their invuln, but decent mitigation also works. The reason you want to fail this is to feed Carby. He will immediately eat the ad, and only one ad. So by having your other groups do the mechanic right, you feed Carby back to a full belly. This is the only time Devour happens, so there being an entire duty bar for it is weird. Anyway, if you do this right, welcome to phase two. Forcing himself back mid, we have Sonic Howl into Ruby Glow 4. This segments the arena diagonally. One side will have two Topaz Crystal spawn, the other, more. We want the side with only two crystals. Split up into light parties and have them each stand on a crystal for Venom Pool. We have West Group be middle, with East Group being the edge of the arena. Venom Pool is stack damage on the healers. Standing near the Topaz Crystals for it will turn them into Poison Crystals right before they explode. If you don't, you will die. As the Poison Pools begin to expand, Carby will randomly jump to either side of the mirror and choose to cast either Searing Light or Raging Claw. You want to see Searing Light. Just stand on the opposite side of the mirror, like in normal, and just dodge the poison. 
If you see Raging Claw, it's claw to tail, but without the tail. Get behind Carby and wait for the swipes to end. The main issue is if he does the claw on the same side as the poison puddles. You don't need it, but it is highly recommended to save Sprint for this situation. Stand slightly to his side, away from the outer edge poison. As the final claw swipe goes out, quickly run to the middle of the arena as the poison puddles shrink and close off your path to it. This is made much safer with Sprint, and you need to get to the center. That entire area behind Kirby is now unsafe. While you can see a tiny, tiny area there that is not poison, another venomous mass into Toxic Crunch comes out. At best, you leave the current tank there to take the venomous mass and everyone else runs through. Ruby Glow 5 comes next with four squares and involves the light parties again. Two Topaz and two Poison Crystals will spawn in opposite cardinal directions. So say Topaz north and south, but they can be east and west instead. As a reminder, my light party is west and north. Move toward the Topaz Crystals with your light parties, but in the section they aren't in. Carby will cast Venom Squall, the cast completing as the Topaz Crystals explode. As a reminder, this is spread, bait AoEs, stack light parties. Quickly do the mechanics in what little space you have. You may want to agree within your light parties where you want to spread and where to bait AoEs. My light party has tank go mid so the boss doesn't move too much. I stay still, but I will recommend our healer do that in future. And our ranged player goes to the far corner. For baiting the AoEs, make sure there's a midpoint between everyone that stays safe. In our clear pool, our healer comes closer to me in the tank, but he would normally go stay at the wall. Some slight panic was trying to stack up, I think. As the stacks go off, Venom Puddles will appear. Resolve these as you would before, quickly running if your puddle is across the arena. If you wish, you can set up some other strat for this Venom, but I would say just do it the exact same way as the first one, True North. As soon as Venom goes off, be ready to move into position for Tail to Claw or Claw to Tail. This one seems to always be the opposite of the first one, but I have a small sample size. Just react to what you get. Either way, it follows into a Venomous Mass and Toxic Bite combo. Sonic Howl into Ruby Glow 6 gives us a four square arena once again. Topaz Stones will absolutely fill the arena. However, some squares will only have two. Venom Pool is coming with this, so do as you did for the diagonal one. One group on each topaz will turn them both into poison crystals. Get away from them and write it across into the other squares. The moment the scattered lights finish, move over and get away from the poison. It doesn't matter if you're using knockback mitigation, but I believe only one of these squares is the intended strategy. This square here has two topaz next to the wall, while the one we choose has a middle crystal. This puts the poison deep through the middle of the arena, giving us no room to do double rush in a way that doesn't require arm's length and sure cast. Using the intended square, poison stays out of the way. Which speaking of double rush, it will come out once more. Make sure you are behind him and pop arm's length and sure cast for maximum control. This might also mean you have to run to a specific corner to get out of the way of the first dash if you didn't choose the intended correct square. If you chose the correct square, congrats you don't even need knockback mitigations. Congrats again, no more mirrors remain. From here, it's all repeating mechanics for the final minute or so before Enrage. We have the second to last Venom Crunch combo, a final Sonic Howl, and then the exact same pattern as right before Devour. Venom Surge or Squall, regardless of what the first one was. Into Tail to Claw or Claw to Tail. This leads into one final Tank Buster and then Enrage. For about 18 seconds, he will spam Sonic Shatter five times. This is the Soft Enrage. It deals heavy but livable damage. After the fifth is Acidic Slaver, the hard Enrage at 10 minutes. Sorry no footage of it, this is the only pull we saw in Rage. Congrats on your clears when you get them. Good luck on getting it down, you could do it just fine. Feel free to pet him now that he's been recaptured. And don't forget your loot. Thank you for watching this guide on Abyssos, the 5th Circle Savage. 
Like, comment, sub, the good stuff is appreciated. Follow my socials link below, and maybe follow my Patreon for more content like this. Take care, and may the power of Anadid Hogsley waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks going out to... Ashtree Dweller, Eamon al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Sidia Diosasan, Serix, Ethan Olson, Ethan W, Frasier97, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Nick Griffin, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thanks again. Hope you're enjoying Savage. See you for the next fight.